Oh dear, this movie, this this movie is fluctuating so much. It is oh goodness me, it's hilarious. So this is Lucasfilm's and in, and Harrison Ford's last attempt at an Indiana Jones film, and it is it is serious fluctuation. So this this article wasn't that long ago. Fourteen reviews, it was dropping down to like forty three percent. But again. Now it's gone up a little bit. This, with 29 reviews, this film is just going to keep going up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. And yeah, not good. Not good. Um, so I, I did a video on this already and I was like, you know, this is a bomb, blah, blah, blah. Real bad reviews, critics hate it. And people were like, 50% isn't bad. I'm like, mate, put it into perspective, right? Perspective is really important here. They spent over $350 million on this film. Anything less than positive, they're going to be very worried about. Very, very worried about. And a lot of people are like, oh, well, you know, the critics hate it, so it's really going to be great. It's like, yeah, critics didn't like Crystal Skull either, uh, as far as I'm aware. And, I mean, they were right on there as well, because that film was shit. So, you know, whatever. Hit subscribe. I'd love to have you here more often. You know, if you like the video and all that, I guess. But let's take a look, because, again, these reviews are just like going up and down, up and down, up and down. Um, and it's a shame, you know, like it's a real shame. People are highlighting Phoebe Waller-Bridge going, even she can't save it. It's like, well, she's probably the reason it's bad. So Rory, uh, do, you know, let, let's, let's compliment sandwich it, shall we? Let's do a compliment sandwich. So screen anarchy, they love it. A MacGuffin is meant to be just that, an object that characters chase after in a story. What it is and what it does doesn't usually matter. Surprisingly, it does. And gives the movie its absolutely bonkers, jaw-dropping climax. So I think uh, I think the rumours are true. I think he does go back in time. It often fizzes as much as it lulls. But in Mickelson's Dr. Schmidt, the film can at least boast a worthy antagonist. And one with enough personality to cover some of those cracks. Oh, good, I guess. Anyway, there's two positives. Let's do two negatives. Uh, a film that inherits the directing mantle from Steven Spielberg should know when to step up. It's about time executives realise that franchises can't be cleanly separated from the visions and talents of those who made them. Oh. The camera rarely creates meaning on its own, except when there's a familiar brown fedora somewhere on screen, at which point it charges towards it like a happy pup, reuniting with its owner. A shot that repeats on at least four separate occasions. Well, it's IGN. That's a weird thing to point out, but all right. Anyway, two positives. It counts as a sort of compliment to say that James Mangold's film, until a gleefully absurd ending, plays just like another episode in the creaky, unpretentious romp. Hmm. Fine fan fiction. That is not the way to start a positive review. Employing much of what makes this character so special play out in new ways while very much embracing the past. When it works, it's excellent. When it doesn't, you still revel in a co in companionship of old friends. Watch, uh, watch a video review. Anyway, so there's two positives. Let's do uh, two negatives. There are needs being met here, but they aren't storytelling based so much as stoking the fan base and meeting the bottom line ones. Oh, you know what? Maybe fans will like this then. I don't know. To me, it screams crap anyway, but never mind. Uh, there are so many chase sequences that the movie seems held together with slender bits of plot rather than the other way around. Worse yet, they're so heavily CGI'd that they come off as grimly dutiful rather than thrilling or delightful. I've heard recurring negatives about the CGI, which for a film heavily based in CGI is not good. Uh, the damn thing is fun. Mangold may not have the young Spielberg's musical flair for extravagant action choreography. Who does? But he is a tougher, leaner director, using a tighter frame and keeping his camera close. Uh, Daily Beast. The de-aging and other CGI manipulations of Ford's body only serve to demonstrate that Dala Destiny just wants to turn back the clock instead of doing anything new. Well, look, I stand corrected. Maybe the fans will like it. It's a vast step up from the muddled mess of Crystal Skull. And while it's not perfect... With its uneven storytelling, it's not a bad end for our favourite archaeologist, Professor Adventurer. That doesn't, doesn't sound positive. It's not a bad end. Alright, okay. 
Uh, it's a sad and safe ending for a series that once prided itself on big escapades and larger than life emotion. Dala Destiny shows that some relics should stay buried. Hmm. Uh, again, lots of people saying, what well, is an improvement on Crystal Skull? All right. The jokes, the zest, the exuberance just aren't there. So instead of joyous send-off for our beloved hero, we get a depressing reminder of how much livelier his past adventures were. Ah, uh, yeah. I mean, I can see that because the film's heavily focused on the past, isn't it? Hollywood Reporter, this is a big, bombastic movie that goes through the motions but never finds much joy in the process. Despite John Williams' hard-working score, continuously pushing our nostalgia buttons, and trying to convince us we're on a wild ride. Ah, uh, interesting. Again, lots of people do like it, by the way. But mixed, you know, 52%. 52% ain't positive, guys. Three hundred. I've got to keep repeating that. It's all perspective. To spend $350 million on a movie and only have a mixed reception. I mean, that's, that's, that's concerning. Apparently, Cannes, as well, gave a very lukewarm uh, reception. Like, like a, like a sort of like a muffled silence was given. I was just like, oh yeah, cheers. This is all right, I guess. Apparently, that yeah, was quite awkward. Uh, if you join him for the ride, it feels like a fitting goodbye to cinema's favourite grave robber. He was a grave robber, was he? Yes, they belongs to us. Someone says at one point. And when it comes to Indiana Jones, yes, they always will. The problem is that it already did, and today feels like a complete waste of time. Ugh. Counterfeit priceless treasure. Dear, oh dear. So, like I said, it's just, it, it's going to fluctuate. It is going to fluctuate. Uh, and they're trying to push out uh, the other movies and the TV show as well. I wonder if they'll do Young Indiana Jones. But they're really, yeah, I mean, it dropped all the way down to 43%. It will keep fluctuating, by the way. But this is not good. You know, it's not good to have that as the... Uh, yeah, to you know, constantly be up and down, up and down. It's not a positive thing. They will be quite concerned by that. Three hundred fifty plus million dollars. I mean, you got to make close to a billion basically to start, you know, breaking even and making money. It's not good. Not good at all. Like really, really, like really, really bad. That's you know, sackable. Where were they? So yeah, this will come up and down, up and down, up and down uh, until more and more people see it. It'll be interesting to see. How this goes in like a week or so, where most critics' reviews are out. Uh, I'll be watching this when it gets released, which is a little while from now. But yeah, uh, let me know what you guys think, though. Love to hear it. Love to hear it. Cheers, guys. Take care.